everyone, I'm Margarita Muradova, a personal stylist and fashion consultant from Kiev, Ukraine. And today we're starting a new series yet again. <laughs> Let me know if you're kind of tired of this whole series thing, but uh, I actually love this one, believe it or not. I actually had this one on my main channel, which is my Ukrainian channel, but I think that one is a bit outdated. But and also I feel like there's more current like style icons to talk about. So I decided to rediscover this series and this series is called style icons dna and in this series i'm dissecting piece by piece someone's style and mostly celebrities and style icons in order the goal here is to let everyone know how we can be kind of professionally and efficiently inspired by someone and not only can we be inspired but we can actually practically take away something from their style that could could work for us and this is basically like a manual on how to read someone's style how to not only be like inspired and look forward to looking at their outfits etc etc but sometimes when we're looking at someone's outfits and style we do not necessarily understand how their style and they can relate to us and our style and this is basically a way to dissect someone's aesthetic and to take away something that works for you and also to understand the contents of what they wear how they wear it their outfit formulas key formulas key pieces silhouettes etc etc and this in practicality i'm hoping will be like a guide slash manual for you to understand someone else's style so for example if you're subscribed to some bloggers etc and you're inspired by them but do not necessarily understand what you're inspired by exactly this is going to be like an efficient way to look at this the wait is over. The sign up for the annual most extensive fashion forecasting webinar called Trendbook 2024 is now open. An event that thousands of participants have already experienced. An event where in more than four hours and over 500 pages of reports, we delve into our details of the fashion industry's future of the next year. Trendbook is an absolute must-have for stylists, journalists, merchandisers, PR professionals, brand owners, and fashion enthusiasts. We will discuss prints, fabrics, colors, textures, all the fashion silhouettes for the next year for each and every fashion category, macro and micro trends in the fashion world. Also must-haves for the next year in terms of fashion on things that will go out of fashion for 2024. We will explore all the new and fresh styling methods as well as tricks and tips on how to make your outfit more interesting and current. You'll receive more than 30 complete outfit formulas for each and every season. All participants also receive an enormous Trendbook 2024 PDF document with more than 500 pages along with the webinars recording. Registration and all the webinar info is going to be via the link below. And without further ado, we're starting with the girl, with a woman, I actually have talked about previously on my main channel with this specific topic. Over two years ago, it's Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. I very uh, shamelessly will say that I have predicted her popularity two and a half years ago when she was not that much on the radar as she obviously is now with the whole rise of the like old money style but this is basically like a perfect example of actual old money style the way old money should be done in a way and let's talk about first some things that would describe her style so let's start with the first topic and the first topic is how i would describe her aesthetic and her style and i would say that she is a perfect balance of feminine and masculine modern minimalism minimalism so what i mean by that is her outfits and silhouettes are pretty modern i wouldn't say that she looks like a vintage 20s inspired etc etc and timeless 
Her outfits are definitely minimalistic in terms of colors and silhouettes and also different logos, etc, etc. And her outfits, the main core of her outfits is balancing out perfectly feminine parts and masculine parts of her outfits to create that beautiful balance because you will never see her in all feminine outfit. You will never see her mostly in an all masculine outfit. There's always going to be that beautiful balance that basically is an essential of her style. Then the next thing we're going to talk about is her silhouettes. Her silhouettes are mostly fitted and semi-fitted or straight. She's never in a very oversized fit. Sometimes she wears some things oversized, but they're always balanced by something body hugging or straight in order to kind of repeat her body's curve and not to swallow her, basically. She's basically like an essence of 90s mass masculine silhouettes slash feminine silhouettes and the whole 90s style. She is the inspiration of everyone's 90s aesthetic at the moment as she should be because she's actually a style icon and she had her own view of her style which is very important honestly. She wasn't styled by anyone which is usually the case with celebrities. She actually styled herself. If you don't know about her she was a John Kennedy Jr.'s uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, and then wife. And uh, she also was very famous for her style. And she also was a PR person. She started as a salesperson for Calvin Klein at that moment. And then she actually escalated to their head of PR, if I'm not mistaken. And she was very, very stylish at the moment as well. She was a style icon even then, and even more so now, obviously, in retrospect, when we look at her style. And her style, I'm saying style so many times, and her style and her aesthetic is basically an inspiration for the Row and Modern Kate, for sure, and a lot of more brands, definitely. She had a very casual, in terms of like style specifics, she had a very casual slash classic approach to her style with some pieces of romance and pieces of sporty. But the main thing is classic and casual if you want to characterize her as like a combination of something i would say that's definitely 35 let me just calculate this because i'm definitely not not a mathematician for sure so let's say 35 percent classic 35 percent casual and then we have the rest which is basically 30 percent i'd say 15 of them is 40 and 15 of them is romantic Yay. <laughs> then what she did in terms of her approach to style and items specifically for prints, she almost never did prints. And when she did, she only did a one print per outfit, which means she never did print blocking, print clashing, etc. She had that famous leopard print coat and she only wore that one with something very minimalistic and neutral, like jeans and a top and pants and a top, etc. Nothing that resembles a print at all. And only she wore like, for example, like a very feminine dress that was printed. I'm pretty sure it was like a flower florally print and then nothing else was printed as well. She was very against like being too loud with her outfits. Also, she almost never wore loud bold colors. Sometimes at some points she wore like a muted or more bright red and that's basically it. For most part of it she wore the main colors for her color palette which is also very essential to her style were neutrals which is like beige, nude, brown, deeper brown, caramelly color with her famous Birkin and then blue of her jeans and then lightish gray and then obviously black and white and black and white was her color combo. She wore black like nobody's business and she actually rocked black. Black looked so beautiful on her also because of the contrast with her skin her undertone and her hair color because she was very very blonde very much super blonde and her color ring was very fair so in contrast to that black look very prominent on her so if you want to replicate that style you need to think not of the black but actually of the meaning behind the black on her which means for you if you're brunette would actually be not black but white or creamy white because that would create most controversial and most like potential contrast with your skin and with your hair which is the aim in here which is the goal in the whole aesthetic and impression of the outfit 
Also, in terms of specific pieces that she had, she had a lot of shirts and specifically white crisp cotton poplin shirts, slightly oversized, fitted, semi-fitted, straight. Those were a staple in her wardrobe. She actually paired them a lot. If you look at her outfit, was absolutely everything: jeans, pants, skirts, etc., etc. Also, jeans were a staple in her wardrobe. She paired them with fitted tops, with cardigans as tops, with some blouses, with shirts, with sweaters and jumpers a lot. And the last piece that was definitely like a staple for her were sweaters and jumpers. She wore them a lot. She paired them with skirts, with uh, dresses, with jeans, with pants, with absolutely everything for each and every occasion. And all of them obviously were neutral. So navy, gray, black, white, etc. She was very minimalistic in her accessories as well. And the only accessories basically that she approved of were her headbands and then her sunglasses. And very rarely did she actually wear like different accessories and jewelry. She had a lot of pieces from her famous mother-in-law, which is Kennedy Jr.'s mom, but she never actually wore them publicly. There was only one instance, I'm pretty sure, when she wore like a very simple pearl, classic pearl strand with her outfit, and that was absolutely it. One more staple in her closet were straight skirts. They were midi, maxi, or knee-length straight 90s skirt, like a staple for everyone in the 90s. And all of them were in those basic neutral colors. And she paired them with heels in different variations. So kitten heels with knee-high boots, and also knee-high boots were an essential in her closet as well. In terms of silhouettes of her tops, she loved her a boat neck or an off-the-shoulder top or a dress with an off-the-shoulder silhouette up top, which looked very beautiful on her and she knew her strength very well. She knew that she had had a beautiful neckline, she had a longer neck and she had a beautiful face and heart as well. So all of those things were very complemented by the whole boat neck slash off-the-shoulder silhouette. And specifically because she did not overload the whole up top silhouette with her like like necklaces and stuff she left it very bare so there was a lot of like free like space slash blank canvas involved that actually accentuated her beauty and her features also, she loved coats, and specifically black and camel coats. Most of them were straight silhouetted, midi length, very popular at that moment, but also very pairable with everything that she had in terms of proportions. For her shoes, the staples in her wardrobe were loafers, kitten heels and muled kitten heels, also sneakers, and flip-flops, believe it or not. And as I've said, at some points, she injected some sportiness into her outfits, but the sportiness was such a small, minuscule touch to the outfit that it actually did not deter from the whole aesthetic of the outfit. On the opposite, it kind of accentuated the main aesthetic, which was classic and casual. Also, she loved a pointier, longer toe, which elongated her silhouettes and complemented her outfits especially because she wore a lot of meaty maxi lengths. This kind of a toe elongates the outfit and completes the outfit, basically. Her backs were mostly, all of them were structured, and she loved her Pradas, she loved her Birkins specifically, and the thing about her, she never, never wore a logo, to a point where she actually asked staff in the Prada store to take off their logos from their bags and their pieces that she bought because she didn't want to be like a walking advertisement slash logo person. She wore everything absolutely logo-less. And then for her outfit formulas, which is really important over here to be inspired by, were main three outfit formulas. So the first one was jeans, a top, maybe a fitted top, or a more like slightly oversized top, and then loafers or heels. The second outfit formula was a knee length slash midi straight skirt, a fitted top, which is important to balance out the proportions, then knee high boots, 
her staple or kitten heels her staple as well and then a coat maybe obviously always a structured bag to go along with the whole outfit formula and the last outfit formula was a crisp slightly oversized white cotton poplin men's style shirt and then it's usually tucked into pants slimmer jeans or straighter jeans so 7 8 jeans and then skirts midi skirts straight skirts knee length skirts and then loafers or heels those are three main outfit formulas that she wore and this is basically a way to be inspired by her style because when it's dissected it becomes very simple and understandable and you can actually see the components of someone's style and let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to create another video of the series or maybe you know specific people that you would like me to create a video on for example rosie hunting and Whiteley's style DNA etc etc let me know in the comments below your personality slash celebrity ideas for this and the last thing that I want to say is brands that kind of replicate her style or if you would like to replicate her style you can use these brands as a basis or as an inspiration in the modern world those would definitely be the row Kate Saint Agni, which is I feel is a an Australian brand, and also Dish, which is an Australian brand. But obviously, you can also do Koth, you can also do Arket, you can also do H and M, etc., etc., and pick and choose specific items that fit the whole formula and the whole components thing that I've uh, outlined today. So yeah, this is it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you've uh, liked this one. Thumbs up this video if it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.